Okay, so we're going to cover section four, which is sum and difference formulas. And then we'll, in a separate one, we'll do section five, which are multiple angle and product to sum formulas. So these are trigonometric identities that we're not going to derive or try to verify anything. We're just going to talk about using them. And these are formulas that will be used in calculus. So uh, they do have some usefulness besides just being mathematically interesting. Interesting. So typically, I think the book basically just says here are the formulas and, and here's some applications. So, so here they are. These are um, all the ones they have different angle different ones so there's the sum to difference so you have the sine of two angles the sum of two angles is the sine of one angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the sine cosine of the first angle times the second angle so we have ones for summing angles difference of angles for both sine cosine and tangent uh, we have these half angle formulas the sine of x over two you can rewrite as plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine of u over two. So that, those are called half angle because we have x over two or theta over two. We have these double angle formulas. The sine of two x or two a in this case is two times the sine of a cosine of a. So these all have twos involved. And there's one for the sine, there's three for the cosine, there's one for the tangent. Uh, kind of the opposite of sum to difference is sum to product. So here we're adding the angles together inside the the trig functions. Here we have the trig function separately and then we're combining it from a sum to a product. Uh, we also have product power reducing. We use these a lot. Um, so there you've got the sine squared of x or u is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2u over 2. Uh, these two we use a lot in calculus. These not so much. Um, we use these quite a bit, these double angle formulas. Uh, the sum to difference we use in deriving some things, but we don't use them that much after we, we've used them to, for deriving stuff. So anyway, that just gives you an idea of all the formulas that are involved. So the sum to difference are these ones. That's section four. And then you've got the multiple angles, which are double angle, half angle. Uh, I guess these sum to products, product to sum, sum to products, those are in just section five. So we're, I guess we're just going to mostly do the sum to difference formula to start with, just kind of introduce you to the whole concept. It's just basically using the formulas. And you can use them with actual numbers or you can use them with variables. Uh, we'll use them in calculus with variables, but I think we're going to use them for for um, for numbers here because we know what the sine of 30, sine of 45, the sine of 60 or pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. If we wanted to know, say, pi over 12, how would we do that? Could we do that? So first, I guess we are going to start with the derivation of the sum and difference formulas. And once they're derived, you can find all the other formulas from the sum and difference formulas. Interesting. OK, and how, how does that happen? Well, as, you know, for example, if I wanted the sine of 2 alpha, I'd have the sine of alpha plus alpha. And then I could use that to derive that. So you can find out using the sum and difference formulas and the fundamental trigonometric identities. I guess that's why we spend a lot of time on this sum and difference thing, because once you have those, you can get all the others. As I said, the double angle formulas are used a lot. And then the power reducing facts. Those are the ones that we use the most. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see if we actually do derive this stuff. Okay, so I'm, I'm not showing as deriving it. I wonder if the book derives it or not. Not really. Okay, so it doesn't actually, we're not going to derive the formulas. 
So we're just going to basically use them. Okay, it's been a while since I've taught this. So here's here's an example. If you want to find the sine of 7 pi over 6 minus pi over 3, um, we know the answer to the, the difference of 7 pi over 6 minus pi over 3 is is 5 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6. But we can demonstrate that it actually works. So this first example is just saying here's the here's the answer. Um, so what is the sine of 5 pi over 6? Well, you can look at you can look at it using the uh, unit circle or you could find the reference angle associated with 5 pi over 6. And that's in quadrant 2, so you take pi minus um, pi minus the angle gives you the reference angle. So it's pi over 6, and the sine is positive in the second quadrant, so it's going to be a positive number. Or you could use the difference formula. So the difference formula, let me just cover this up so you don't try to go ahead too much. Let's, uh, okay, so there was just using the uh, unit circle to find the answer. But let's show that this difference formula works. So in our case, u is 7 pi over 6, and v is pi over 3. If we subtract 7 pi over 3 from 7 pi over 6, we get 5 pi over, five pi over 6. The answer is a half. Now, the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Okay, how do we know that? Well, we could just plug it into our calculator if we're in radians. Or you could go to the unit circle, find that angle, and you'd see the y coordinate on the unit circle is negative 1 half. The sine of pi over 3, again, go to the unit circle, plug it into your calculator, you get the square root of 3 over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the and actually, we need the cosine of. Uh, we also need the cosine of 7 pi over 6 and the um, cosine of pi over 3. So you need four numbers here to make this work. So we also need the cosine. Cosine is 7 pi over 6. The unit circle, the x coordinate is negative the square root of 3 over 2. The unit circle, the x coordinate of pi over 3 is a half. And we plug that in. And it should end up being the same answer we got by just taking this final difference, which was to, you got 5 pi over 6. Should, the formula should work. So the sine of 7 pi over 6 minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 6, is the sine of 7 pi over 6 cosine of pi over 3 minus cosine of 7 pi over 6 sine of pi over 3. And these are each, this one's negative a half, this one's positive a half. Cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative the square root of 3 over 2. Uh, the sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Negative 1 half times positive 1 half is negative 1 fourth. The negatives cancel out. You get square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is 3. 2 times 2, which is 4. So we get negative 1 quarter plus 3 fourths is a half, which is the same answer we got just by doing the math inside the parentheses. So the purpose of that was to show that here, here's an example of we know all the answers and it does work. Now here's a case where we don't have this angle on the unit circle. Now we could look this up just using our calculator, but if we didn't have the calculator, all we had was the unit circle. How do we find the, the sine of 105 degrees? Which, which ones do we know? Well, we know 90, we know 120, we know 135, we know 150, and we know 180. Those are the those are the angles. Pi over 2, uh, 2 pi over 3, I guess this one's 3 pi over 4, this one's 5 pi over 6, this one is pi. So those are the, the coordinates, or the uh, positions on the unit circle. So this this number 105 is right there. We don't know what that is. But 
we can say that 105 is the sum of 60 and 45. And we know the we know the trig functions associated with 60 degrees, and we know the trig functions associated with 45. What are they? Well, let's just add a page. Let's just um, you know look at your unit circle. So if you look at your unit circle, and let's just draw these two angles, 60, which is here, 45, which is here. Let's draw draw a circle. And if you look on your unit circle, the coordinates of this point are the square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And for this one, 60 is 1 half, and the square root of 3 over 2. Now, again, you've, you've got your paper, but how do I know that? Well, because this is bisecting this quadrant, I know that these two have to be the same, and the one angle the two things that are the same are the square root of 2 over 2. So that's why I knew that. The other one is if I draw this angle a little bit higher and then I draw a straight line down, you can see that I'm about in the middle. So that means a half because the radius of the unit circle is 1. So if I'm halfway, I'm a half. And then this one comes over there and I'm not even close to a half. So I know that it's not a half. It's got to be the other part, which is square root of 3 over 2. So Anyway, so what we know is, looking at the coordinates here, the cosine of pi over 4 is the same as the sine of pi over 4. And I'm using pi's here, but let's use uh, degrees. So cosine of 45 is the sine of 45, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And then the cosine of 60 degrees is a half, and the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So I can plug those values in using the formula that we looked at earlier. The sine of u plus v is equal to the sine of u times the cosine of v plus the cosine of u times the sine of v. So this is the square root of 3 over 2. I'm just What I'm doing is I'm looking at this and then go over here. So the sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 60 is 1 half. The sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. So you plug those in. And then we try to simplify it. So you get the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2 times 3, square root of 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Then we add 1 times the square root of 2 divided by 4. And that's it. The square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Well, let's use our, calcula well, use our calculator to come up with the decimal number just to show that this actually does work. So we take the square root of, take the square root of 6, add the square root of 2. That's 3.8637. Divide by 4. And I get 0 0.9659. Now, if I plug into my calculator the sine of 105 degrees, so make sure it's in degrees, which it wasn't. So we take the sine of 105 degrees, and we get 0 0.965. Five, nine, da, da, da. They're exactly the same. So you can see the, the formula does work. Okay, let's look at the next one. So the cosine of 105. Well, we've already got everything we need here. We use the cosine formula. Cosine of 105, and 105 is the sum of 60 and 45. Is the cosine of 60, yeah, where'd that equation come from? right here. Cosine of alpha plus beta. Cosine of alpha, cosine beta minus sine alpha, sine beta. So that's where they come from. So we um, you see we have all the numbers over here to the, to the right. Cosine of 60 is a half. Cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2 minus the sine of 60 which was square root of 3 over 2. Sine of 45 
and another way to write this is um, you'd have the square root of 2 minus the square root of 6 both divided by 4 what it is change the square root of 6 into the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 and you can factor out the square root of 2 so I could have you know up here this is the same as uh, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 minus 1 over 4. I think that's the same deal. And notice, so these are kind of like opposite each other. This is 1 plus, this is 1 plus this thing. Well, it's the square root of 3 minus 1 here. It's 1 minus the square root of 3. Okay, so let's see what the decimal number is using the formula here. So we get the square root of 2 times 1 minus the square root of 3. It's going to give me a neg negative number. whole thing divided by 4. And I get negative 0 0.2588. And then if I go to my calculator, find this cosine of 105 degrees. Cosine of 105. It's negative 0 0.2588. So it is the same. Okay, next one, what's the tangent of 105 degrees? Okay, so we use the tangent formula. Let's go back to our list of formulas. Tangent. Tangent is alpha plus beta is the tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta divided by 1 times minus tangent alpha tangent beta. Okay, so that's the formula that we're going to use. Now, what we need is the tangents of those numbers. So that's interesting. So the, the sine and cosine, we need both the sine and the cosine. For the tangent formula, we just need the tangent. But remember, tangent of 45, that's going to be the sine divided by the cosine. Well, they're the same, so that's going to be 1. And the tangent of 60 degrees is the sine divided by the cosine. See the twos cancel out, and you end up with the square root of 3. So that's the tangent of 60. That's the tangent of 45. So tangent of 60 would be the square root of 3 plus 1 divided by 1 minus the square root of 3 times 1. So we get that now. We wouldn't leave this in this form because we have a square root in the denominator. And the way we handle it is we're going to multiply the denominator by 1 plus the square root of 3 to rationalize it. So we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus the square root of 3. So here you get 1 times 1, which is 1. The inner and outer cancel out. You get negative the square root of 3 times positive the square root of 3 which is negative 3, so you get 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3. In the numerator, you use FOIL. So first, you get the square root of 3. Um, inner, you get 1. Outer, you get 3. And last, you get the square root of 3. So we get that. So you can see I've got 2 times the square root of 3 plus 4 divided by negative 2. And then you see that I've got a common factor here of 2. So if I divide everything by this by negative 2, I get negative 2. If I divide this by negative 2, I get negative the square root of 3. So that's your answer. And let's plug that in to our calculator. So we have negative 2 minus the square root of 3. So that's negative 3.732. But if we use a calculator to find the tangent of 105 degrees, we get negative 3.732. Now, back in the old days, you know, this would allow us to get at least get a, a number of additional angles that we couldn't get just from the unit circle. And we got the stuff from the unit circle from two kinds of triangles. One was an equilateral triangle, which was cut in half, so we got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 
the other triangle was the um, isosceles right triangle where the two sides were one and the hypotenuse was the square root of two. But like 12, 12 and a half degrees or 12, whatever the, you know, what possibilities. Let's just think about that. If you have 30, 60, 45. So what kind of other angles can we get out of this? So if you take 45 minus 30, you get 15. Um, 60 minus 30 is still 30. So we don't, that doesn't get us anywhere. Uh, so, so we got 0, we got 15, 30, 45, 60. So we could also get 75, 30 plus 45, 75. So it allows us to get two more angles. Now, uh, ultimately, we're going to have these. We can use these to get double angle formulas. So we could, we could take the result of this and get 7.5. And then, if we had 7.5 and 15, we could get 22.5. And you know, so you can get all these ones that are in between. So, you know, there is a. This allows you to get other angles, and the trig functions if you want it, if you need them. Okay, here's another one. Uh, find the exact values for the sine, cosine, and tangent for theta equals 285 degrees. So again, that's not one of the angles that we normally have on the unit circle, but we do have we do have uh, 270. That's 270 is. Um, is the axis and so we could take 270 plus 15 or you could take 240 plus 45 so we don't we don't have 15 yet um, we could get I don't know why I took half you know half 15 um, could we get 15 yeah I mean we could get 15 using what I just talked about and then we could use that or 240 is one of the angles already on the unit circle. So we'd use this, this sum, not this one. Just because we, this one we'd have to figure out. It's kind of like goes along with this 105. Same kind of deal. You know, 90 plus 15 is 105. So, so the, um, So I'm going to choose this, these two as my possibility, because 240 is on the unit circle, 45 is on the unit circle. So the sum of those two is 285. And so we use the same equation. So we take the sine of 240 plus cosine of 45 times cosine of 45 plus cosine of 240 times the sine of 45. Uh, we already have the cosine and sine of 45. So we have that previously. And the sine of 240. So again, you can use your unit circle, but if you think about it, this is 180, and 180 plus 60 is 240. So this, I kind of haven't drawn, it's really, it's really more down like that. It's more towards this axis than that axis. And if I were to draw a unit circle associated with this, and then follows it to the x-axis. You can see that's going to be midway, so that's minus one half, and this one's going to be minus the square root of three over two. So we can write that down. We can say the the cosine of 240 is equal to minus one half, and the sine of 240 is negative the square root of three over two. And we know the cosine and sine of 45 are square root of 2 over 2. So you just plug in the numbers. Uh, so that's all what I just talked about. Here's the, here's the values. So now we can plug them in. So the sine of 240 is negative the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 240 is negative 1 half. Sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. 
square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. You've got a negative sign here, and you've got a negative sign there. And again, we could, uh, we could put that on our calculator and just double check all this stuff. So we take the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2, which is 3.86 something, times negative 1 divided by 4. We get negative 0 0.9659. It's like this one. So these two must have the same reference angle. Anyway, stick it in your calculator. So if we say, what is the sine of 285 degrees? Again, that's not something that's on the unit circle. We get negative 0.96. So here's our calculator. 285 says negative 0 0.9659. Then you use the cosine formula. So the cosine of 285 is the cosine of 240 plus 45. 240 plus 45 is 285. Use the formula, plug in the values, you get that value. And finally, the tangent of 285, which is the tangent of 240 plus 45 in the argument. Again, the same formula that we used earlier. So you plug all the stuff in there, and you get the answer. So I'll let you write those down if you want to pause. But, you know, again, we multiply and divide by 1 plus the square root of 3 to get rid of any square roots in the denominator. And then we multiply it out in the numerator. 1 times the square root of 3 is square root of 3, and then we get 1 times the square root of 3, which is, add those together, you get 2 times the square root of 3. 1 times 1 is 1, so square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Now, so those are all examples of how you can find angles that are related to 30, 45, 60. We talked about how that you know, what kind of numbers we're talking about. You can also do it with um, variables. So the next one is verify that the sine of 3 pi, 3 pi x is equal to the sine of pi. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's, uh, let's cover that up and just work it out. So that's kind of like it an identity. So what we would do is we would, you know, if we said alpha equals 3 pi and beta equals x, and then we use the appropriate formula that says the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to, let's go back here and see what it is because I've forgotten. So we could use this one somewhere here. So I'm going to uh, take this equation, this one there, so we'll copy that. Okay, so here it is. So, um, in our case, so it's going to be the sine of alpha cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha sine of beta. So now we'll plug in what we have. Alpha is 3 pi, so we get the sine of 3 pi times the cosine of beta which is x. And actually, it's, it's a sine of 3 pi minus x. Okay, so, so I need to use the minus 
So let's let's fix that. Yeah, we're not we're subtracting it. So the sine of three pi minus x. So this is still true. We want to use uh, this equation instead. Not plus beta, but minus beta. So uh, that's equal to the sine of alpha cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha sine of beta. So I'm just copying this down. Okay, so it's alpha is 3 pi, so we get the sine of 3 pi cosine of x minus cosine of alpha cosine of 3 pi times the sine of x. So what is the sine of 3 pi? Well, yeah, that's 2 pi. 3 pi would be that. So we're back to the negative x-axis on the unit circle. The coordinates are negative 1, 0. x is negative 1, y equals 0. So the sine of 3 pi is 0. So we get we get 0 sine of 3 pi times cosine of x, which is going to be 0, minus the cosine of 3 pi. The cosine is the x coordinate. That's negative 1 times the sine of x. So this is 0. And you get negative times the negative is a positive, And you get, you verify that it's true. Now there was some trig identities we used at the beginning of the chapter. I think it was maybe maybe, we, maybe I do that. Let me just yeah, let's let's do one that's similar to this that we had early on. It was those cofactor cofactor identities. I think it said like the sine of pi over two minus x equals the cosine of x. Let me just double check that. So it's right at the beginning of chapter five. Sine of pi over 2 minus x equals the cosine of x. Okay, so that's that's called a cofunction identity. But using our terminology, alpha is equal to pi over 2. Beta is x. So the sine of pi over 2 minus x. So here's our formula. The sine of alpha cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. So what is the sine and cosine? So again, we could draw this unit circle. Pi over 2 is here. The x-coordinate is 0. The y-coordinate is 1. So the sine of x, or the angle, is the y-coordinate, and the cosine is the x-coordinate. So if we plug that in here, sine of pi over 2 is 1, times the cosine of x, minus the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, times the sine of x. So the answer is cosine. And there you go. So that's that's where those cofactor identities can be proved. Uh, this is a you know verif verification problem. So let me uh, again cover this thing up. So we're just supposed to verify that. So it's just another tool to verify trig identities. So what you do is you let you know alpha equals x and beta equals y. Let's get our formulas here. So which is the one that's applicable? It looks like, well, you're like, well, we're actually over here, right? No, right, we'll use one. We'll use two of them. We'll use this one here, and we'll use that one there because x is alpha, 
y is beta. So we'll expand this out using this formula. We'll expand that out using that formula. Okay, so let's see what happens. So the cosine of x plus y, cosine of x, cosine of y, minus sine x, sine y. That's uh, it's this one right here. Cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, that's right. Then we do the same thing for the second one. Cosine of x minus y is cosine x, cosine y, plus sine x, sine y. And then if we plug those in here, we're going to use FOIL, because we'll have like a plus b and a, well, a minus b. Yeah, so how did I get that? So what will happen is you'll have, if you multiply these together, put these in parentheses, you'll have this first, which is cosine x, cosine x, cosine y, cosine y, so you get cosine squared x, cosine squared y. If you do um, outside, you get this times that, cosine x, cosine y, sine x, sine y. And if you do enter, you get the negative, so these cancel out. And then finally, the last is negative, so there's your negative sign, sine x times sine x, which is sine squared x, sine y times sine y, which is sine squared y. Okay, so we're still not there yet. <clears throat> what can we do now? Um, hmm, what can we do? I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Um, so what, what I've done here is I have... Uh, Replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. Okay. I would not have thought of that, but apparently it's going to work. Then, what we can do then, what do we do next? We, um... Okay, so what we do is multiply this out. Cosine squared x times 1 is cosine squared x. And then we have cosine squared x minus sine squared y. See, both these have sine squared y. So we can factor out sine squared y, or negative sine squared y, and we're left with this, ter uh, this term and this term. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x. So it's just rearrange, multiplying it out and rearranging it. And then you see we've got cosine squared plus sine squared, which you can use the Pythagorean identity to replace this with 1. So this becomes 1. So you have 1 times negative sine squared y. And then you just rearrange the order. So it's cosine squared minus sine squared, cosine squared x minus sine squared y, which is what we ended up with. So the tricky part was, was here replacing cosine squared y with 1 minus sine squared y. And then you see that the left-hand side is the original right-hand side, and therefore it's verified. Okay, so that is the section 4, which is using the sum and difference formulas. So what did we do? We used it to find angles that are not on the unit circle. We're kind of limited on which angles. It's not like we can do every angle, but we couldn't. You know, we can come up with um, a lot of different angles. Uh, the second thing we did was uh, we verified some identities using the multiple, uh, sum, sum and difference formulas. So uh, check out the video on examples, like the homework, and then work on your homework. And then if you get stuck, you can look at the... Uh, videos for the homework solutions.